It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. I bet you didn't know that inventing activity by black inventors peaked in 1899, and it has never recovered. Black and Hispanic college graduates patented half the rate of white college graduates. That's just one of the reasons why you need to know about Invent Together. When our patent system gets more diverse, our nation will get stronger and more successful. Find out how you can help diverse inventors and unleash economic opportunity at inventtogether.org. Amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked On Sharks, your daily source of everything Team San Jose. I should do this intro with, like super Canadian accent one time. I, I just, I just never do. Like, we yeah, should hire sure. a Canadian to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what we should do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. There, there's some Canadian for you right there saying, "Yeah, no, for sure." Um, I just, I just read this whole thing about how "Yeah, no" and "No, yeah," and then "Yeah, no, for sure," and then "Yeah, no, for sure." A hey, bud are all different sentences, which they are, hey, and I use them. Uh, the A comes before the bud. Anyway, I digress. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me as always are Eric and JD, the Nanaimo bars, and Beaver Tails to my poutine. Those are all Canadian foods. Poutine is poutine is great. Nanaimo bars are nice, but they're like pretty rich. Yeah. And Beaver Tails, I've never had. What the fuck's a Beaver Tail? Like I actual Beaver Tail? All the, no, any be- of those uh, items. No, so you can't actually eat a Beaver Tail. So it's it's fried dough. It's like long. It looks like it's shaped like a Beaver Tail. Yeah. You drop it in, and it gets fried, and then you put toppings on it. Which is like, what kind of toppings do you put on it? The classic one is the cinnamon sugar, mm. which is good. And then, but people go really wild. So caramel, you can get Reese's peanut butter cups, peanut butter, Nutella. You can get whatever. I mean, I've had like a fried dough thing with toppings. So even though it's not technically a beaver tail, I've, I've had a beaver tail. I would say yeah. poutine is my favorite of all of those three. Oh yeah, poutine is is elite. Like McDonald's here makes poutine. Oh, that sounds. There's you know it, what I found? It's horrifically bad, but like perfect yeah but like per- my it's deals exactly sort of. how you're imagining mcdonald's making a yeah, yeah 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 oh god i found they, don't, a, they I, use they use cheese curds so like credit to them yeah as long as they have actual cheese curds i found a, a montreal montreal like deli in town and a dude who runs the place is a huge habs fan and when it's non-covid times so maybe they're open up again i'm gonna go down there for the next game uh he always has a habs game on and always has hockey going on down there and I bought yeah, poutine and some and some other deli meat from them. Some smoke. JD, you famously have never left the country, which blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had an actual poutine? Negative ghost writer. Really? Oh man. Gotta get you drink, get you drink, get you drunk. You gotta get the perfect drunkness where you're just like, I want to eat mm-hmm. hot, fresh poutine. We'll get you, we'll start you with a just your classic cheese, yeah. gravy, curds. And then we can branch off to something you weird. You gotta only drink Molson's. <laughs> and, and, and the bat blue, the bat blue and Molson, and then oh, and then you give him okay. oh, well, bat blue. Do I get a denim jacket, jacket while I do this? Nothing, but well, are there are there any good Canadian beers? The craft brewery scene in in Vancouver and Toronto is like pretty bumping. Yeah. All right, we'll get him some fine. Like, some but like the major, purpose. the major guys, we could go if you wanted a Canadian major guy. We could do uh, Alexander Keith's just from Nova Scotia. We could do Laker, Maker a Laker. It's a buck of beer. Mm. I like that. I like that. Made with, that's, made with that's real nice. lake water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I then you got it. like your Molsons and your Labats, Coors American, and then there's like local stuff like Moosehead would be would be a Canadian oh, thing. Sle- Sleeman, Sleeman sounds like semen. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's from Guelph. Uh, Sleeman Clear is like three point eight percent. You can just drink a thousand of them in a night. It's a great <laughs> little hack <laughs> if you ever if you ever want that. But we're not talking about this today. We're delaying because I don't know. I feel like we're all tired of the discourse around Eric Carlson. But today we're doing another. Big question, and the question today is, can Eric Carlson be elite for San Jose again? Now, already people have turned off the episode. I don't care. (laughs) Carlson has been elite in San Jose multiple times. Yes. Eric, don't you you close your mouth. 
He looks, <laughs> he looks, you look like a trout. He has the Pete DeBoer look on his face right now. <laughs> Eric Carlson was the leech after the slow start in his first year, 18, 19. Yep. He was elite for like two months when he had, he had like the Sharks won what 15 or they went 15, one and three or whatever. And he had 25 points in 20 games or whatever. Yeah. Was. And he had like 14 points in a row and stuff before, like that, yeah. before he got hurt. He was clearly elite. Yes. I dare say he was elite despite his groin injury in the playoffs. He was still a point per game basically yep. and doing stuff before his groin really shredded. And there was moments where there's, there's like, there was stretches this year where there was four or five games in a row where he was an elite defenseman. Did it last very long? No, but he was still showed it. Especially after he came back from that, he missed those four games this season and he came back and he was a different player for a while. Um, but the Sharks aren't paying eleven and a half million dollars for a guy to be. Uh, oh, they should pay him four point seven five million dollars. Yeah, they should pay him the Kevin Bank uh, contract. <laughs> but no, uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm enjoying how Eric is just smiling and grinning his teeth right now until we're done talking. But um, Kyle, if we don't shut up, he can never talk. So we'll just keep going back and forth. <laughs> um, but no, I think the filibuster. If, it's the American way. Yeah, the filibuster and the Eric Carlson Discord. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're paying him eleven and a half million dollars, and you want to see someone be elite for for more than you know, like four games in a row, and then like kind of have like a oh yeah, well yeah, yo, yeah for sure yeah, yeah. So I think also I forgot in the nineteen twenty season that he completely played a season here. Yeah, I don't remember much of that season because the pandemic really just wiped thumb. out my memory. Yeah, he busted that, his thumb at the end, but I feel like he was really coming on at the end. Yeah, I mean, Carlson is a notoriously slow starter. Um, you know, we've seen that now the past three seasons since he's been with the Sharks where he kind of has a slow start. And then after about 10, 15 games, he really starts to kind of heat up. Um, but the main thing is, can we see, I don't think we're going to see vintage nor is Carlson, but can we see like 90% of that for a full season? Probably not. Is that, is that still elite? No. Uh, well, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Can he what easily is... be the best defenseman on the Sharks? Let's like, see. Yeah. I think, I guess if we're going to get bring it technical here. <laughs> um, it was now turned like, off. No, like no. <laughs> so, so, like, when you're measuring a, a population of players or people or things or whatever, well, like, that's... elite is effectively, like, better than like two standard devi- deviations or more better than average. And so you're like very clearly a cut, a cut above the vast majority of the population. And that is like, in terms of evolving hockey's goals above replacement, that is where Carlson was hovering from 2011, 12 to 2018 through 2018, 19. As Cal mentioned, he had, he had a great first season in San Jose, but since then it's been, it's been a straight downward shot from there, unfortunately. And so like, even if he got back to 90% of what he was, that's not, that's like not going to hit that sort of two standard deviation. So like very, very It'll be close. It, it might be close, but not, it won't be sort of hovering, straddling it like he was during his prime, I guess. It only is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball's in full swing. You can track all the action at bet online. You can also get all the news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all your UFC and MMA action. So before the next pitch, head over to BetOnline, check out all the great sporting news, and sign up for bonuses and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get in the game as teams prep for the runs in the playoffs. So head over to the website or use your mobile device today to sign up and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On. Again, that's locked on to get 50% welcome bonus. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. This episode is brought to you by HP Instant Ink. No one is reading your mind, but HP Instant Ink knows when your printer is running low and sends you new cartridges. So you never have to think about ink. Save up to 50%. You'll pay less than $5 a month for ink and never run out again. Find out if your printer is eligible and enroll today at hpinstantink.com. Conditions apply. For details, visit hp.com slash instant ink Spotify. So I would be very surprised just based on his age and based on his recent injury history and the fact that the team around him isn't super helpful 
it would be a big challenge for him to even get to 90% of, of analytical Eric Carlson. In his first season with San Jose, he shot 1.8%. Imagine if he shot his career average of 6.4. He would have yeah. been, 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 been nuts. Had like, he would have had it like, been nuts. Yeah. He would have been over a point a game. The one thing I will say, though, is if you flip over to the expected goals above replacement model, which I believe the Evolving Hockey Twins think is a better way to look at goalies, or sorry, defensemen, over a shorter period of time, he fell out of the – he was way more than elite in terms of what you would expect to happen on the ice that everything happened until his last season in Ottawa. And since then, he's he's been – like an above average player, basically. Above average is still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but not when you're paying. Yeah. That was what you're paying. Above average is pretty good until this year when he was uh replacement level. Yeah, his Yeah, well, so was everybody else in San Jose, not named Evander. Right, Kane. right, right. So I depending on expected and what actually happened, it's gonna be tough for him to get back to to like the top third of defensemen in the league sort of thing in terms of his, anal- his yeah and profile. i think there i think there's a lot of team influence involved in his game at this point like when he was when he was 23 and put up 74 points in 82 games or when he was 25 and put up 82 and 82 he was the team and i think now he has to fit more into the ecosystem mm-hmm. or the ecosystem has to fit more to what he does like one thing that bob did really well this year finally was that he stopped putting carlson on the penalty kill for a bit yes and he started him more offensively, which is good because that's if you're going to pay a guy eleven and a half million dollars and have him be your top defenseman or, or one of your top two defensemen, you kind of have to tweak some stuff to fit him in there because he's not going anywhere, right? Yeah, you have Makes to make sense. some adjustments. You can't just shove the Eric Carlson square peg into the crescent moon hole yeah. and hope for the hope for the right. best. Right. Gotta, again, like having Eric Carlson. I mean, yes, you want your you know guys playing be able to play defense in all situations and stuff like that, but like especially with Eric Carlson, when he does have an injury history, why those, you know, that minute, minute and a half that he's playing the penalty kill, those are hard. That's hard time right there. Why don't you give those minutes to uh, Redeem Shimmick or Kanijov or one of your more defensive defensemen, let him play that time. And then like, okay, cool. We're back on the offense. Here you go, Carlson. Why don't you go do Eric Carlson things and go lead? Like that's, that's good strategy right there. So yeah, make him a glorified Tim Heed. <laughs> Ouch. That was look Tim on Heed's face. Tim oh, Heed, uh, Kyle's face right now. <laughs> Tim Heed. Tim Heed no. couldn't stick handle his way out of a paper bag. No, for sure. That's why I said glorified. Yeah, I, I said glorified. Glorified. Qualified. The Jeff is, Bezos of Tim Heed's, maybe. Is, is Tim Heed a dead uh, poor man's <laughs> the, the Scott Niedermeyer of Tim Heed's. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, in the sense that Tim Heed, when he was playing regularly, was given a very, very, very offensive forward role, was asked mostly only to take zone starts in the offensive zone, play against meh competition whenever possible, that sort of thing. And I think the problem with that with Eric Carlson is that his huge strength still when his groin is working is his transition game. And so mm-hmm. you don't want to totally remove him from the defensive side of the, of the ice. But I think maybe it's like a question of, okay, if you have a defensive zone start, put him out there with one of the top two lines rather than saddling him with, with like Gambrell or, or yeah. And that's part of adjusting it too, right? Like putting him out there, throwing him over the boards now with Gambrell Leonard and pick a four Sorensen. I guess he didn't play much. Donato is probably not going to be the best use of Eric Carlson when you could throw out Honestly, for that line, just throw Kinesiov and say, dump it out. Of the- oh, he plays with Carlson. He plays throw with Throw out Shimek and Vlasic and say, just get it, yeah. bang it, bang it off the glass and get it out. But those are kind of the spots where if Hurdle's line jumps over the boards, put him with, put Carlson out there because then that way you can actually get some transition going and your defense isn't going to be a complete disaster. Yes, yes. And I think a key point, like we're saying there's a lot of key points. Eric Carlson does overcome a bunch of different stuff. Um, he can make, he can still band-aid his way over, over some bad stuff, but another way to maximize eleven and a half million dollars is finding him the right partner. And I don't, is Kinezhov the answer? That's a good question. You know, or who is the answer? Yes. Artemi Kinezhov. Mm. Ooh, I kind of like that. 
I kind of like that, but I feel like coaches All the don't puck put, handling? Yeah, I feel like coaches don't put n- nothing else. Just like you can go one direction. I feel like coaches don't put two guys like that together for, for a reason, but I would love to see it. I would love to see just like the absolute chaos that would, that would happen if, if Niazev somehow steps into the NHL They need to next call season. up Merklin and Knizev Kine- next year so that their three right defensemen are Burns, Carlson, Merkley, yes. and then have Knizev. Knizev. Well, Ferraro doesn't offensively stick handle ever, so. But you need, he tries Kijov, and he loves the game. <laughs> yeah, Ferraro and like Vlasic. I don't know. No, Vlasic needs to not be on the ice. Either but way, he's the I best want defensive defenseman. Apparently. No, he's the third best defensive defenseman <laughs> after my Russian boy. Uh, after and Mario Ferraro. Maybe Ferraro. But if they have if they have Ferraro, if they have Merkley, Burns, and Carlson all on the team at once, then oh, that'd be so sick. Kine- Kinezev has to go with the stick handling defenseman. Yes, yes. <laughs> transition 100%. defenseman. That's oh, my dream. <laughs> God, I really, I just want to see those three down the right side. I've been saying that for so long. If it doesn't happen, I'm it's going to happen. My, I'm going to switch Burns my makes eight million dollars and, and uh, Carlson makes eleven and a half. That's true. They can't go happen. anywhere. They can't go anywhere. Uh, well, so, then it's more a matter of getting Merkley in there. All right, so what we don't think Eric Carlson can ever reach peak. Well, it depends. Yeah, Eric Carlson. But are we talking for like longer than four games at a time? Yeah, I so, hope so. Yes, preferably longer than four games. At yeah, a time. I think he, sir, sure, he might be there for stretches, but he's just going to be much more volatile than he ever has been. Probably. So what? What do you think is a realistic like Eric Carlson needs to be this for the Sharks to kind of get top pair, not, top pair D man. Yeah, but like, what does that look like for him? Like, is that is he close to like sixty points a season? Where you know, maybe I don't think I don't we're going to get sixty. I don't know what points mean. Uh, <laughs> those are when you score. You, uh, but like, I, I'm assuming if you know Carlson plays ninety percent of the games because you know he's probably going to miss a game here or two with maintenance with the groin or whatever. But like, that's probably just going to be part of Eric Carlson the rest of his career, where he's like, where he's not going to be like Brett Burns, where it's just like eighty-two games, pencil him in, he's not going to miss time. But like, so if he's playing. Carl- if he's playing ninety Carl- percent of the games, what do we what? What do you want to have a better defensive Car- impact? Carl- well, I don't really care about that. He's an offensive guy. During his first two seasons, he was positive or at least sort of replacement level ish there. And last year, he was horrendous. I wanted to get. Yeah, back I mean, to like, like if, if he's like ground. average, if he's average at defense, it's fine. Sorry, yeah. that, so that, 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 that's I wanted to get back there because his first two seasons, he was at least there, if not better. That last and year, in his first just, season, he was a 0.85 points per game player. Yeah, it was just insane. And last and and his first two seasons, his defense was was solid. And last mm-hmm. year it just totally but even then in his totally second tanked. season, even then in his second season with San Jose, he went down to 0.71. Like if he's average defensively and has is like 0.7 or above, that's probably top pair in the NHL. Have you ever noticed how there's way more cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, Hondas, and there's different models, Enzo's, Countach's, F types, Accords. Well, it's impossible to stock all the parts you need for all those different kinds of cars, especially at a chain front. So why is your often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like, is your Ferrari broken? Nobody wants that. Instead, you can go to your computer and access rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. A big reason to repair and maintain your car is to save money that you can then use for other important things like rent, food, playing golf, whatever you want to choose to spend it on. But why not save 30, 50, 100% more for the exact same auto part uh, on rockauto.com? rockauto.com is a family business serving auto part customers online for 20 years that's a good reason to go to them they're trustworthy go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers they have everything from engine control modules i don't know what that is and brake parts i know what that is so you have everything covered when your ferrari breaks down best of all prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers why spend up to twice as much for the same parts go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or Ferrari, right? Locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts car your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. This episode is brought to you by the NBA. Witness mind bending competition on the biggest stage between the best players in the world, a place where legends are made. It's impossible jumps that seem to freeze in midair and spectacular steals that you didn't see coming. 
It's that one play that lasts seconds that you will talk about for the rest of your life. And let's face it, it's the unpredictability of it all. Never knowing when the next big moment will happen. Huge wins and crushed dreams. It's the drama of it all. You just can't make this stuff up. That's the NBA. That's game. The NBA playoffs are happening right now. Don't miss all the action. Okay. Yeah, by by point per game, sure, yes, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, Kale McCarr is not bad because he had a point per game this season. <laughs> he's okay. <laughs> I mean, he's not. So, yeah. but if he if he if he can actually be average at defense, I think his offense will probably just still be there because he's still good at doing offense, especially if San Jose kind of structures a little bit of stuff around and gets him off the penalty kill and puts him gets don't ever put Brent Burns and Eric Carlson on the power play again. We're done with that. We're, we're, we, we've established yeah, that. Them up and give me each your own power play. I don't yes. know. I don't, I understand the, the um, logic behind it. Like they are two. If you have six guys players. in there since the end of the game, sure go nuts, do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. But like but we've like, seen, we have a big enough sample size. I feel like where we've seen those two guys and it just doesn't work with the uh, the power play together where you feel like kind of Brent Burns, like his power play is, you know, like it's kind of a different style and Eric Carlson's is like a different, like Eric Carlson's going to kind of do some more crazy stuff and find a guy where I feel like with Brent Burns power play, it's more like kind of they work within the structure and type of thing. And that's fine if those works to their strengths, but like having them on the ice together, it just doesn't gel very well. No, it doesn't gel very well. I, there's there's a place that, that used to have power Team? play squads <laughs> easily easy to look up to see who did well with whom and I can't find it. So powerplay.net.com. I can't refute or <laughs> confirm your also your, I did uh, the uh quick math. So if we looked at if if Eric Cross plays not, 90, I'm not here for quick math. I only want 90 percent of the it's games. Long, so we'll say 74 games. Math. Um and ports up a seven points uh seven points a game or whatever uh that puts up seven points a game the man is point seven points a game (laughs) we're winning everything uh that puts him at 51 points for a season so on like a 74 games so if he misses like 10 or eight games a season i don't even even know what that means i would have put him at he would have been the seventh highest scoring defenseman in 2019-20 during the full season or during the 70 game season I would take that. Yeah. So, and it was nice to see his shooting percentage go up too, like where he started with the Sharks at uh, under 2% last year, or 1920 was up to five. And this year he was uh, up to 7.3. So, and led the defenseman, had more goals than Brett Burns famously. So, you know what's interesting though? Hmm. With Eric Carlson at five on four last season, with Brent Burns was the second, was like, was the second best expected goals for like teammate combo of of all of Eric Carlson's major five on four teammate combos. So you're saying when they're on the ice together, they they did well relative to other combos of teammates of Eric Carlson. Hmm. Well but also like yeah the power it also play... helps because if you look at it the Burns Carlson also went out there with Hurdle Couture Kane. Whereas when they broke them apart Carlson was now with John Leonard, Timo Meyer, Kevin LeBanc and Mario Actually, Frog. I yeah. feel like Carlson yeah. got the first shift. I mean, Carlson would usually get the first shift, and then like Burns would get like yeah. all the children. Ah, so they, they switch. They switched. They get, but, yeah. Sometimes they would play the all two minutes yeah. uh, of one power play. So it just yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to widen this little this little toggly toggly thing here. Let me see. It, ma- it makes it makes sense to spread them apart because at least now you're having a power play quarterback on each power play. When you, when you widen up for the, the uh, yeah, yes, love yes. of God, Mario, Mark Edward Vlasic and Mario Ferraro are not it on the power no, play. No, 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 yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. right, right. You didn't see Brent Dillon ever getting out of or Brent Dillon, Brent who's Dillon. Brent Dillon, Brendan Dillon, Brendan Honestly, Dillon ever on the power play. Brendan Dillon would have been an upgrade over Mark Edward Vlasic on the power play. Oh, Lord, no, when you, when you expand the um, the ice time, Donato pops in up there over Brent Burns. I think generally it's more uh, just, I think, eyeballing this relative to 
Oh, yeah. He was much better with Donato than anyone else. So that sort of suggests maybe there is. That's unfortunate because Ryan Donato's not going to be on the team next year. No, <laughs> Ryan Donato. Ryan Donato is going to get traded to his fourth team in seven years or whatever. That is. He can just he can just fly away. Yeah, he, yeah he be free. Be free. Them. No, that's true. But they should also trade him for something. They're not going to do that anyway. Well, so, the sign and trade, the sign and trade with the old hey million dollar deal for the 20 25 year old. Who doesn't want one of those? Well, he might be an RFA. Uh, Ryan Donato's an, an RFA, RFA, so they could trade his rights. Yeah. Oh yeah, trade his rights for the right to party. A <laughs> anything. Fifth round pick. It's like in Moneyball when he's like, "I will trade you this reliever, but you also have to put soda in my machine for three years." Like, what? <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, soda," and then he gets free soda. That's what they should do with Ryan Donato. Just be like, "Could you <laughs> could you please pave our parking lot?" That yeah. would be. That, would that be happens. In, that ha- so in the NBA, whenever you see because NBA allows cash transactions, you can basically just yeah. buy picks, right? Whenever it's a cash involved, so it's like guy for guy plus the New Jersey Nets trade Houston $500,000 in money, that money actually has to be spent on basketball operations or whatever. It's not just like you get $500,000 on the cap. So teams will, I think it was the Nets famously or something like that. Um, they paved their parking lot because you have to spend it on stuff like that. You can't just, it just, you just can't have it. Like it doesn't go to the owner. You have to use it for stuff. Um, but you have to use it so they would just like pave their parking lot and like rebuild stuff because that's what you have to do. Uh, I mean, um, they're building the new Solar for America thing for the CUDA. Just yeah, there you there go. There you go. We can name it the Ryan Donato Bleachers for <laughs> the Ryan or Donato something. Memorial. <laughs> the Ryan Donato Fun Run for the Cure. Um, okay, so our verdict is that Eric Carlson will never be elite again. Yeah, but he can still be really, really, really good. So I choose not. I choose maybe. Not to I choose. I choose not to answer. Uh, <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> no, that would implicate me in a crime. I just choose not. I just choose not to answer or remember. Yes, Mark McGuire style. Okay, can we? Do we think that he can be a first pair defenseman again? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay, can he be a second pair defenseman? Yeah, you make a second pair. Offensively sheltered to the, to the degree that defense can be sheltered. So you're assuming his defense is never coming back, and he's just caved in for the rest of his career. I don't know about caved. I think it'll. I think it should come back a bit. But then I don't think he'll get caved. But I I feel like I feel like it will be hard for him to be like a break even guy on the defensive side of the puck. We're talking about the player as a whole. Yeah, and I'm saying the defensive side is not going to be great. It's going to be so bad that it just kills the offense side. I don't think it's going to kill. I don't think it's going to to overwhelm his his offensive capabilities yet. Mm. But I think that is sort of the concern in like I don't know, two years, three years. Okay, so, but you said he's not going to be a first pair defenseman again, right? So you think ne- that that's going to start next year, not in three years? Yeah. Right. Damn, that's bleak. Uh, I don't agree. <laughs> um, that means that you think that so you think Eric Carlson hit the cliff. There's no coming back because that's what it is, basically. It sure looks that way. Thanks. All right. Well, if you would like to tweet <laughs> us at, at Locked On Sharks on Twitter, uh, you can email us at gmail.com. You can get us at Facebook or Instagram, Locked On Sharks. JD's putting up all our stuff there, so we will get your DMs on all of uh, all of those places. If you would like to DM JD specifically, you can do that at my fry hole. If you would like to DM Eric specifically, you can do that at foul ball 15. Uh, if you want to DM Kyle and console him about this cliff that uh, Eric Carlson will never come out of, you can find him at Kyle Demetrius. All right, bye. <laughs> get all the sports news you need in under 20 minutes with the Locked On Today podcast. Host Peter Bukowski updates you on the latest news and every major sport with the help of our local experts. Follow the Locked On Today podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts.